Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to chapter two. We will start off our space uh, launch technology or rather rocket technology uh, with the most important chapter, uh, basically the rocket equation itself. Uh, I've uh, coined this chapter as velocity uh, because it is going to dwell with the rocket modeling. Uh, in fact, the fundamental of uh, rocket technology itself. Uh, Alright, now uh, before we start talking about uh, rocket, let me uh, put things into perspective. Now, uh, a rocket is a very, uh, very similar, in fact, uh, with missiles. That's why I say uh, when you uh, speak about the rocket technology, uh, it is a very sensitive technology. Uh, more often than not, uh, the development starts uh, for military application uh, in most of the countries. Uh, then after it goes into the commercial application, basically to send your satellites, uh, even um, uh, your payloads, etc. Uh, but uh, primarily, uh, uh, interest of uh, rocket technology is indeed started with military, basically, uh, especially for the missiles. Uh, now, it's important to understand that uh, well, you fly a rocket. If you want to actually take a satellite into its orbit, practically you're going to do a, a vertical flight. But if you want to actually have maybe an intercontinental missile, then it is going to be more often than not in the horizontal, almost a horizontal flight. So that is the difference, but the technology remains the same uh, in terms of that uh, rocket engine itself. So uh, the calculations of performance, etc., cetera, uh, it, the, the trajectory calculations, etc., uh, uh, that, that remains basically uh, more or less similar. So it's just that what I'm saying is that a missile, uh, a missile is going to fly basically horizontally and a, a rocket, a launch vehicle to carry a satellite to uh, fly uh, vertically. So uh, basically, you will be you will be going back to the actually same fundamental in that sense. Now, in order for us to uh, uh, design a rocket, or rather to develop a, a, a performance equation for the rocket, assumptions must be done first. Okay, for that uh, rocket impulse equation, no external forces. Basically, what you are going to say that is weightless, and no other forces are disturbing your rocket. It is an initial system, so initial systems, you know, it's a, basically it's a fixed. You have an X, Y, Z coordinate. Uh, well, you can imagine, assume that planet Earth, then you have an X, Y, Z with respect to basically the center of planet Earth. So it is a fixed system, then it's the initial system, then you have the rocket flying. So one fixed coordinate, and then the rocket flying. So the body coordinate of the rocket can basically uh, can alter itself depending on the trajectory. But you have one fixed coordinate, let's say you are from planet Earth, then you should have a uh, a fixed coordinate with respect to the planet. So it's easier in that sense. Uh, then thrust vector. Uh, if I model the rocket, this very simple rocket, let's say, uh, flight direction, basically. The thrust vector, uh, this is a flight direction. So the thrust vector basically is parallel to the flight direction. So the thrust vector basically is going to be parallel to the uh, uh, flight direction. Now these are very ideal. Whether it happens really in that, uh, the actual application, uh, chances are very slim, very very slim because there will be some deviations for sure. So that, but what we say is that these are the assumptions that actually we have. Now, uh, important parameters. If you look at it, uh, exit exit uh, gas velocity w e. That means it has to be here. This is the gas. So there's an exit. It gives you the thrust in order for you to actually move forward. So this basically that's very very important. Yeah, the flight direction. Okay. Uh, it's parallel basically. So your, if you know that actually your flight direction is here, okay, there is a push, thrust, and then there's a push of gas, and the thrust basically takes you up. So that's how it exists. Huh? So that is very very clear. So if you look at uh, uh, the parameters, the uh, exit, what what gives you the thrust is basically is that the exit gas. So there is a gas basically a huge amount of gas with a high speed gas is being pushed out here that gives you the thrust that gives you the thrust that means the thrust form yeah? that gives you the thrust form all right that's very very important to understand yeah? now uh, another parameters which is important is the basically the rocket mass itself because you you have uh, although we see we specify that actually it is a massless it's a weightless but don't forget you have mass in that sense yeah? That means it, weightless means that we are saying that at, uh, we will model the rocket equation or rather the rocket uh, without an effect of gravitational force for the start. But we will incorporate the gravitational force later. We are not going to neglect that totally, but we will incorporate that later. Okay, uh, then you have the uh, rocket velocity. 
the R, okay? Look at velocity, the R, you have the rocket thrust, K, as I've said, okay? You have basically something pushing, then the thrust actually being uh, taking, or rather something pushing, the gas is pushing out, and then you have the rocket thrust, which actually drives the rocket front. So that's how the whole thing is. Then you will have an, uh, gas velocity, gas density, now, jet, this is important. This is a jet velocity and that exit mass. So, what happens here? If you look at it, there is a jet velocity. When you look at a rocket, there's a, there's a push of jet basically coming out. In fact, there is a gas. Okay? And that is extremely, extremely important in order for you to get that thrust. That means, in order for you to get the rocket flying. The more faster you can push the gas out, the more faster, basic, the uh, faster basically you can push the uh, rocket forward. So, what makes this happen is the engine. You will look into it afterwards. So, the, you have a very very good engine. It can is able to basically push the gas out. It's a very very high speed. That is going to be very 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 important for your flight because you are going to actually fly even faster than what it is simple equation if you look at it this is your jet now this jet splash of a gas out is equivalent to basically the rocket okay rocket velocity and you plus basically the, the exit velocity. This is exit velocity, yeah? Okay? This is the jet velocity. Jet velocity. Exit velocity is basically is a you you have it, you have it. There's a profile here. It's an exit velocity. This whole thing is jet and exit velocity. So now what you want is that you want the rocket to fly. So if you want rocket to fly, let's see basically the so how to make sure the rocket to fly? So we need to have the jet. I'll bring that actual velocity here. That's so V uh, jet velocity minus with that actual exit velocity. W is exit velocity. That will give me a rocket velocity. Now attention, be very very clear about this positive sign. My flight direction is this way. If you look at the X, this is a positive direction. Okay, this is a positive direction. When this component, which is exit velocity, goes to your left side, it should be negative, right? But the actual vector for the exit velocity is in this direction. So it is inverse of the flight direction. So minus that uh, V minus W will become actually V plus W. So it's a positive component that gives you a positive flight towards to the flight direction. Simple, simple, basically analogy. You must understand what it was. So what is important here it says that when I have jet, it's important. But it looks like I must produce better exit velocity. I must produce a better exit velocity. The more exit velocity I have is, is going to be very positive for me. Because the whole jet velocity, the jet velocity, this is a jet, jet velocity, it is it is a component of the rocket velocity. And that exit velocity. Okay? This is the component of that. Alright. So, in order for us to have a maximum of rocket velocity, I should keep on increasing my exit velocity. This is extremely, extremely important. Yeah? This is extremely, extremely important. Is that clear? So, so, it's, it's a, it's a, so if you look at the design parameter, um, I'm very, very clear that 
I got to keep on increasing the exit velocity of the rocket engine in order for me to fly better, fly faster. That's what it means here. Get it? Done. Alright, gone. Okay, now Zelowski equation or rocket equation. Now this is this is a very fundamental equation. Uh, Zelowski is a Russian. His full name is uh, Konstantin uh, Zelowski. He's the first guy who actually came up with this rocket formulation. That's right. Uh, uh, as you can see, basically the first uh, you know uh, satellite basically is Sputnik one. So that is the reason basically the Russians got there first. So the uh, Zelowski rocket equation says states that uh, velocity increment or characteristic uh, velocity yeah, delta v from point one to another point. Because why? When you want to fly a rocket, it has to be from point one to a point injection. So this delta v is what it means. It's nothing but CE, no, what is CE? Is effective exit velocity. Please do understand that effective exit velocity happens during the flight of a rocket. WE, which is the exit velocity we have talked about, it is an ideal velocity. It, it is being designed while you are developing the engine. And you do the when you do the engine test, you will test for WE, not CE. CE only happens during the flight. In ideal case, you what you want, whatever you design, that's what we want. So you design WE because we know we need to keep on designing WE to be better. So you keep you design w, good WE, your CE also will be good. In ideal case, we hope that WE is equivalent to CE when we fly, right? That is your ideal case. But in the actual fact. WE will be never same with the CE. Effective exit velocity. Rocket equation, to use the rocket equation, you must have the effective exit velocity. Who is going to give you this effective exit velocity? The rocket manufacturer will tell you what is the CE of this particular rocket. The engine manufacturer will give you what is WE of this rocket. But when you want to calculate your trajectory, you must use CE. So the rocket equation tells you, delta V, characteristic equation, is minus CE, integral of step 1, condition 1, condition 2, is just the difference of the mass. What is the difference of the mass? Start mass over current mass, resting mass, okay? Start and mass. Start and mass. So that what means. So if you look at it, the CE is long start mass over end mass. This is the rocket equation, which is very, very important. You must remember that. Looks very simple, but the trick is basically it is that CE that you need to have in order to solve the rocket equation. So it's a very simple equation. It will tell you, okay, I want to calculate what's my delta V from planet Earth to uh, injection point. You please give me what is that CE. CE belongs to the engine of the rocket. Okay? And you tell me what is the uh, mass, start mass. And what is the end mass. End mass, end mass. What is the end mass normally if you can imagine? End mass would be after you fly for some time. Let's say after you fly for about 5 minutes or so. Then you are going to use fuel. So the mass is going to be lesser. So that end mass is going to be lesser compared to the start mass for sure because the fuel will be used. So that's what it means. Right? Total impulse is another parameter which is very important. There's nothing but total impulse is basically integral of your force. Force is what? Thrust. Okay? Alright. For constant uh, for constant thrusting, that means what you you keep on injecting Injecting same amount of thrust, that means what you are producing K, same amount of thrust, you maintain that actual the incremental velocity to be same, increase it. So for constant thrusting, basically it is nothing but I total will be the thrust times by the actual time. So that will be the basically total impulse. Now, beyond the total impulse, another parameter which is extremely extremely important for the rocket engine is specific impulse ISP specific impulse tells you is it gives you the ratio between the thrust and the fuel flow that means what 
you have an open engine, how much of thrust in terms of Newton you're giving with a kilogram, let's say, a, a kilogram mass flow. If you have a fantastic rocket engine, you just give a bit of mass flow, it's going to produce a huge amount of thrust. So that means specific impulse will be very big. If you have a very huge specific impulse, please do understand that engine is super, super duper. Because it's so efficient that you give a bit of fuel, but it gives a lot of thrust. That's what you want. But a very bad, bad rocket engine. You give so much of fuel, but it gives you a very little, little thrust. If you want to fly those kind of engine, better don't fly. Reason being, you are basically flying up there. You are flying, your payload will be your fuel <laughs> instead of your, your satellite. So it, it is, it is it's technically, it is not a viable. Now, why specific impulse is important? We can actually re modify this. Re modify this in a very different terms. And we can see how we can eventually incorporate that gravitational force here. We can rewrite this. Specific impulse is also equal to the force, that means the thrust over mass flow, okay, the fuel flow actually, times by the G. G is the gravitational force. Or total impulse over the fuel mass, the used fuel mass, G. Or, more interestingly, you give me a CE, and I know my G, G is gravitational pull, I should be telling you, I should I can tell you what is the specific impulse. But this is very important. Please do this equation is extremely, extremely important. Now you can see, you can see that although we don't have a rocket equation which incorporates the gravitational pull, because we say that we are we are developing a rocket equation without any external forces. True, that's very true. And you see there is no external forces. But we are bringing another quantity, which is a specific impulse, that can incorporate the gravitational pull of the planet Earth. Now, the biggest problem of, of uh, flying a rocket, if you fly, especially if you fly vertical, is the gravitational pull. That is going to reduce your performance because you are trying to fly up and then the gravitational pull is trying to pull you down. So the biggest, biggest challenge for you to overcome in terms of the engine is indeed the gravitational pull of planet Earth. For rocket business, we use 9.83 meter per second squared. Typical for any rocket design. So, now, there you go. So rocket equation can be rewritten. We can rewrite the rocket equation. Remember this. This came from the specific impulse. Specific impulse is equivalent to CE over G. So I rewrite rocket equation. Now my uh, delta V is a bit more realistic. Although I started designing the rocket equation saying that it is basically there's no external forces. But now through specific, thanks to specific impulse, I've rewritten that uh, rocket equation and incorporating gravitational pull and my estimation of delta v that means how much of velocity i need from ground to the injection point now a bit more realistic but it is not perfect it is very very realistic almost there almost perfect but it is not perfect because there are other other external forces that we didn't take into account for example what Aerod aerodynamic forces we didn't take into account, but we can compensate for it later on if you see in your subjects or rather if you see in the lectures. Now, total, then we can also keep on calculating the total efficiency of that rocket. Total efficiency is, of course, is divided by two. I mean, there's two components, inner and outer efficiency. Inner efficiency can be rewritten. Simple again, CE is your effective exit velocity over the CEID. So what is saying that the inner efficiency is saying that okay what is my CE? We can rewrite this again with the actual thrust 
over that usage, yeah, usage of the, the fuel. You can rewrite this. But typically, if I give you, if I give you uh, the CE, you should be able to calculate the inner efficiency. Uh, uh, don't forget, we can actually simply estimate the total chemical energy of the particular rocket engine by knowing the exact CE. So, if you look at it, CE is one of those most, most, most crucial parameters basically when you talk about rocket equation. Okay, just to give you an a example, for cryogenic uh, H2O2, that means it's a, a liquid form, okay, you have a, a hydrogen as the fuel and uh, oxygen liquid as uh, oxidator. Uh, this is a supercritical uh, stage. You have it in, for example, Ariane. Uh, the specific energy with uh, enthalpy you can actually calculate. How? Simple. For ideal case, the CE would be 2 square root of 2 times by the actual enthalpy. And the enthalpy is actually depends on the actual fuel that you are using here. So you should be able to get your CE. Look at the ideal CE here. Is about five kilometers per second. That's quite fast. No? Okay. As opposed to if you look at SSN, SSME, space shuttle main engine, we will look at it afterwards. The ISP would be about four five five times by. Let's say ISP is about four five five. It is not a great uh, to have four five five. That means uh, four hundred fifty five seconds of uh, of a specific impulse is okay, but it's not the best. You will see in later parts, huh? you can have actually double or triple of this uh, 455 later, okay, because of the nature of the engine. So you will have a delta V basically, a CE, uh, uh, about 4 km per second. Huh? So, and therefore, we can calculate that inner efficiency. So this is a simple calculation huh? to, to show you how we can calculate the inner efficiency. Go on. For outer efficiency, the same thing. I can re manipulate that. And we can rewrite this in terms of a start mass and end mass, basically. MO is your actually start mass, MP is your end mass. You plug in here, you should be getting your inner efficiency. This is how I deduce. Okay, more importantly, this form. Okay. So when you when you have when you want to launch a rocket, you know what is your start mass. You know what is the fuel that you're going to have. So basically, assume that this is just a single stage, you know that after that towards the injection point, fuel will be actually used. So you can actually predict that end mass. So that ratio should be able to, you should be able to calculate and the outer efficiency can be calculated as well. Now, so uh, maximum outer efficiency you can see is about, well, 0 0.65. It is not of a grade, okay? It is not of a grade. Basically from zero to VB. VB is basically at the final stage of your flight, if you look at it. So it goes up. Yeah, the efficiency. So if you look at it, the efficiency of the rocket is not too too not too much also, is it? You are looking at you are look, not looking at 90%. You are saying that about 0 0.6, 0 0.7, both in times, you will be dropping below below 0 0.5 actually. That means below 50%. And all this comes from why it is not efficient efficient. It's not because of efficient, because the modeling that we have done, yeah, we don't incorporate all these actually uh, losses, other losses. What we have done here is that we have uh, uh, successfully incorporated that one of the major major challenges which is that gravitational pull but don't forget aerodynamic pull we have uh, other basically uh, uh, disturbances basically okay misfiring for example a lot of uh, 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 external factors or internal factors that we have we didn't really incorporate or we, we, we don't incorporate so we compensate basically indirectly go on all right now uh, starting from here, it is extremely important for you to understand how we are going to actually calculate the uh, delta V, or rather how to actually use that rocket equation uh, successfully. Okay, I've been telling, let's just take a good example of single, single stage rocket. That means you have a flight requirement from point A, point, point 0.1 to point 0.2. That's it. And you need to deliver a payload. Maybe a satellite. Okay, all right. So, I'm just telling you, most important thing is that give me what is your start mass. Tell me what is the start mass. And what is my basically end mass. So, the start mass or the mass of the rocket would be the motor, the engine, structure, you have structure, you have fuel, and you have the payload. Payload is what? Satellite. If the human is there, payload are human. 
Okay, this is extremely important. You must understand the start mass of a rocket is important. This is the component. When I when I want to calculate a rocket, give me the start mass. Why I need? Okay, give me what is the actually uh, mass of the engine. Give me what is the actually mass of the structure. What is the mass of the fuel? And what is the payload? That will be given here. All right, you have already start mass. So as I've said, you have start mass. You need to know what is the end mass in order for you to calculate. When, in order for you to use that uh, rocket engine's equation, that means you want to calculate delta V. Please tell me what is my end mass. This is important. So end mass, if you look at it, is easy. Like what I said, the start mass is given. Let's say n naught. The end mass would be basically the start mass minus with the fuel that you're going to be used. The fuel you're going to use. The m t m fuel. Okay. And T, T, I mean trust, huh? trust. You get the trust. Trust is not free of charge huh? in rocket. You pay, you pay the fuel, you give the fuel, then you get the trust. That's how it is. Huh? It is nothing is free. So in a rocket engine, the currency is basically is fuel. You pay the fuel, then you get the trust. So keep on paying the fuel, the trust you are going to get. And this comes from the fuel. All right. Let me rewrite this. When we rewrite this, you will have this form. Again, I repeat, the top most is that N0, N0 is the start mass, and down is going to be NB with, with the, without the fuel. Rearrange this, I can rewrite this, I call this sigma, I call it structure ratio. I call mu L as a payload ratio. How this is done? All right. What is structure ratio then? Structure ratio is motor plus structure over the start mass. What is the payload ratio? Payload ratio says that payload over the start mass. Now, why these two is very important? You want to see what is important here. You want to carry more and more payload. So there should be an indicator, there should be some 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 parameters indicating that the efficiency or the, the actual uh, mass of the rocket in terms of the payload and the structure. Now, if you look at this, what do you want? Here, just start here, payload. Let's say start, let's say M0. That means M start. I want M start to be very small and I want the payload to be very high, correct? Assume that the payload and M0 is the same, that means the mu will be one. Eh? It can never happen <laughs> because we know M0 is consists of M motor, and structure, and fuel, and the payload. Payload is satellite. I can't have satellite without the motor, without the structure. So it can never be one. Eh? This component cannot be one. Mu one is is impossible. There is no, how can you fly a satellite without fuel? How can you fly a satellite? That means how you can take the satellite into its orbit without an engine or without the rocket, without the fuel. It never happens. So mu can never be one. Period. So likewise, if you look at it, so I know that, so what I want here, if I have sigma very small, is it a good news? Sigma very small is good because that means my structure is smaller, my motor is small, so I have more opportunity to carry my payload. I can put a bigger satellite. So you can see that, well, mu I want maximum, and sigma I want some minimum. Mu L, payload ratio, always I want bigger, but I can't get one for sure, but I want bigger and bigger. Structure ratio will be basically smaller the better. Or smaller the better. So again, I can rewrite the characteristic equation, delta V. This is again, it's a rocket equation. Huh? This is again a rocket equation. Rocket equation that we have seen very primitive. We have evolved into this form now. Delta V, characteristic equation, CE, effective exit velocity, ln 1 over sigma plus mu L. You don't see the mass because I have actually deduce the mass into these two new parameters which is a uh, structure ratio and payload ratio. So let's see some ex uh, example for you. 
Scout, Ariane, and Section 5. Uh, mass basically huge. Huh? This is a this is a heavy heavy lifter. This is a heavy guy. All right. If you look at the start acceleration, and you look at the sigma. Now this is what I want to discuss a bit. If you look at sigma, just now I told you that sigma, which one you would like? You would like actually sigma to be basically lesser and lesser, right? So this sigma is 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 the is the least compared to the others. So this is uh, good news, but it doesn't mean when you have a sigma lesser. It doesn't mean sigma, you have lesser, you will have a start acceleration more. It doesn't mean that. You know why? Because when you have a when you have a sigma lesser, what you try to do? You will try to put more payload, right? You will you will put more payload. If you can the sigma is lesser. Here. Say I'm start. This is small, it's good news. But that means what? I can add more and more payload here. So you add more and more payload, what happens? The start mass becomes more. Okay, when start mass becomes more, what is the problem now? Start mass becomes more, gravitational pull is going to pull you again. Even worse compared to the lighter rockets. When the mass is lesser, the pull is lesser. Mass is more, pull is more, that will drag your start acceleration. Now, please understand, mu L, always good to have high. Sigma is good to have low, but don't forget, bear in mind, it may affect your start acceleration because you, uh, since the sigma is smaller, you tend to put more masses into, into the payload. That means you are carrying a bigger satellite. When you carry a bigger satellite, that mass is going to go to your rocket mass. So when the rocket mass is bigger, what exactly happens? It is going to pull your start acceleration. So that's that's important. But it's good to understand that sigma lower is good and mu is higher is good. Now another another problem is this: when sigma is lower, sometimes you have a very small engine. When sigma is lower, when you have a smaller engine, you are incapable of carrying bigger mass. So it it. So when, when you have a small, that means you can't put it bigger mass, okay? So you must understand how, what is the requirement exactly that you are looking for, right? All right, if you look at this, this is a very good uh, explanation on what we have discussed. What do you want? Mu L can never be one, for sure. It's impossible. What do you want? You want basically a, a lower sigma, okay? When you look at a lower sigma, what exactly happens? My delta V, delta V actually is quite big, quite high. This is what it says here. When the sigma is actually getting more, zero point, uh, uh, I always write here zero uh, comma two is actually zero point two. This is zero point one, this is zero point zero five. So sigma is more, look at that, it drags, pushes your delta V. Okay, pushes down your delta V. Sigma is, Lesser, delta V is getting better. Delta V is getting better. For the same CE, yeah? this is for the same engine. Yeah? For the same engine, for the same engine, this is what happens when you play around with the sigma. Gone. All right. Now, this is a series rocket. Now, uh, before we start, it's good to preamble this to you guys. Uh, there's two types of rocket that we're going to be exposed to. Uh, and in fact, it's quite typical series type that means one after another the staging rocket comes with the staging okay so there is a series type of staging that means just now what the example that we have seen just now is that one single rocket that means you want to you want to uh, uh, travel from point one to point two you have one single stage that's it one engine and you travel done but there are actually other rockets series types why because when you want to travel, let's say, from point one to point two, you are using that fuel. Let's say you have a very huge tank with a full of fuel. After half of the flight, the tank is half. But there is another half is empty. Why should you keep on carrying this empty tank? Why can't you just cut the tank into two parts? You use up the first tank. And if you don't have to, uh, there's no more fuel, why don't you just eject it or just throw it away? That means you are not 
carry any date mask anymore. Why you want to pay for date mask which is of useless? Just throw it away. So then came the concept of series, staging the rockets. So in this case, it's three stages. That means there's a stage, you use all the fuel, throw it away. Then you have only two stages. One, two, three. Use, throw. Fly with only this. Two stage. Use, throw. Fly with this. Use, throw. You have the final stage. Okay? That is your payload stage, so to say. So how this actually uh, happens is we look at start. This is the same concept. Just now we have seen in a, uh, stage one. So you have a, a lower stage, lower stage one, lower stage two, lower stage at n, and this is a lower stage at n plus one basically. Yeah, the payload. All right. So start mass is m1, m2, m2 up to the payload for sure. Payload is the last year. This is a start mass. So start mass is very easy. Plus all. Rocket, a rocket stage is what? Is basically a rocket stage. Again, the same thing. A structure, mass, and uh, your fuel. Okay? A, a rocket stage without the payload. If you talk about a rocket stage, is what? You want to talk about a rocket stage, what? There's no payload here, right? There's no payload here, there's no. But the start mass, you must include the payload. Huh? Fuel burn. What is the fuel burn? Well, the rocket stage itself. Rocket stage minus the fuel. Rocket stage minus the fuel. What will be the real uh, fuel burn mass at I stage? That means uh, fuel burn at I stage is basically MB. That means that whatever left here, then you plus with above. That will be the actual real fuel burn mass for I stage. Now, in this case, is what you know. You on this. This will be not on yet. Eh? This will be not on. First, you must on the lower stage. You use it. And this lower stage is carrying itself and also stage 2, stage 3 and the payload. That means uh, he's working for him, working for stage 2, stage 3 and the payload. Take him out. Then, Stage 2, working for him, to carry him, carry the above stage, carry basically also the payload. That's why he says here, it's the real fuel burn for I stage. Himself and plus above. So rocket mass, again the total mass, you look at this, huh? this is the same with this. Rocket mass, when you say rocket mass, please, it's all plus your payload mass. This is simple. Done? Alright. So, if I put that into equation, it's very simple. Lower stage, total mass is what? Start. Mi, you plus with the ml is that payload mass. Lower stage 2, m2, Payload, 3, if it's 3, 3, plus with the mass, payload mass, for lower stage, and payload mass, okay? And the payload will be the last stage basically, only the payload will be there, there's no more stage, okay, wrong. Alright, increment of velocity, how we are going to calculate for each and every stage? It's very simple. You have a rocket equation. You have already developed rocket equation. Why can't you have three stage? If you have three stage, I want to see there is three delta V. Delta V1, delta V2, delta V3. How to calculate delta V1? Let's say delta V1. What is the start mass for that stage? And then start mass minus the fuel. Simple. Done. Stage one, right? Delta V1 done. Delta V2. Okay, delta V2. What is the start mass of delta V2? I mean, the uh, uh, second stage. Start mass of 2, then for that stage, minus the fuel, done. Stage 3, what is the start mass of stage 3? Minus the fuel, and So if you have 3 stage, you have delta total equals to delta V1 plus delta V2 plus delta V3. Then that is that what is written here. Okay, now remember always very clearly, 
that the start mass and end mass for each and every stages can be different. Likewise, the effective exit velocity can be also different. They can come in a different performance in terms of the engine. Different engine. Same technology, but the engine performance can be different. That means CE might not be the same in stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. No. Depends on the engine that we, we put in. What about the uh, uh, structure ratio? Well, structure ratio. M auto plus with M structure over the total mass. Okay. Excluding the fuel rocket, the fuel, uh, rocket fuel, this particular we can write minus that. All right. Increment velocity, now we can rewrite this as in this form. Same rocket equation, same rocket equation. What I have said that, I can write as the MO1, MO, MO1, MOI plus 1, which is actually, this is a payload ratio. Start mass and mass. Okay? So we can keep on writing this. This can be written, this form is can be written as a the form just now we have introduced where you see structure and payload ratio you can you can keep this or you can write as a structure or payload ratio okay in terms of payload ratio so payload ratio you have payload if you have uh, three stages you have mu one you have mu two and you have mu three okay for example you have a stage one you have mu one you have a stage 2, then you will have a mu 2, and so on. We will see afterwards how we can manipulate this. Uh, well, uh, this, this formulation, is, you know, you can write in a different different manner as well. Oh. Alright, if you look at it, this is for, for n stage. Huh? I can write in terms of the mu. Look at this how. Delta V, function of uh, uh, structure, ratio, and basically payload ratio. So what it says that? So if I'm, I'm looking at the first stage, it is going to be mu1 and mu2. This is my first stage. Second stage will be mu2, mu3. Third stage will be mu3 and mu4 is basically your payload. Yeah, and payload. Okay, you see, this is why it is. Mu1 is always 1. Don't even bother calculating. Mu1 is always 1. And mu L, this is mu L, the last stage will be basically is your total mass. For example, the last stage is mu 3 and mu 4, right? So mu 4 is basically it's your payload, payload ratio. Yeah, actually, actually your payload ratio. So payload ratio is the actual mass of the payload itself over the total mass of the rocket. So you should be able to calculate this. So now the problem is this. Huh? If you look at the delta V, whether the mu is basically the structure ratio and this especially the structure ratio, huh? if you look at it, whether this has been uh, optimized or not. Now you are putting, remember this, you are putting one structure after another and then you are putting the final structure. Whether we are optimizing this in terms of the mu, we are not very, very sure. Obviously, it is not. So, this mu need to be actually optimized because what uh, what mu tells you is a payload ratio, right? Whether this payload is been optimally carried out, carried out, we are not very sure because all these engines are just put together just like that, and it is flying. If somebody is actually carrying another guy, then it's a stage three. I mean, stage the first stage is carrying stage two and one, and also the payload. But it is not basically optimum. So we need to actually optimize this in order to find the actual, actual values of these ratios. Because they have, so we should optimize them together. That means we should optimize them, stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3. We optimize them together so that we get the best, best, best ratios. That's what it means. So if you apply this, you will, you, will, uh, you will end up actually having a differential equation. Technically speaking, you look at the optimum solution. Alright, this can be solved huh? Go on. for mu 
that I, after solving, I can actually just share that exact results which is readily available for you to use. Okay, then mu. Solve the second degree equation. So you know, technically, actually, we can solve this. Okay, now for A1 and B1, this is what is given A1 and B1. So you inject inside the C is, you inject inside the uh, structure ratios for those particular stages. For two stages, mu2 is given as it is. And three, three, three stage rocket, I mean rocket, mu3 is given. So mu1, what is the value of mu1? Mu1 is 1. What is the value for mu4? Mu4 is payload mass over the total mass. Only thing is missing here to optimize is mu2 and mu3 for three stages. So you have an optimized mu. That means what? The payload has been has been carried optimally. That's what it means here. Otherwise, you are going to put more masses maybe in uh, first stage and less mass in second stage and more mass in third stage. We do not know. So what is this 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 solution will give you what? Which is the best mass I should put? How much of mass I should put in first stage in terms of the ratio mu? And how much of that mass I should put in second stage and third stage for me to get that maximum delta V. That's what I say. See. If you simply don't, you don't calculate that, every one of them look like independent. They are independent, independent, independent. When they are put together, you are not sure whether they are efficient or not. Or is this the best? You are not sure. You are not sure. Okay? So this is actually is important. And this will give you that actually optimum, optimum payload ratios. Okay? The ratio will be excellent. Alright, gone. Uh, this is just to give you some example of Ariana. Huh? Uh, so, motto, just to, uh, don't get confused, huh? because uh, the, the list can go on down. I just took uh, important ones. Uh, the mass, this is a motto mass, but in this case, the motto mass, please understand, the motto mass is inclusive of the fuel and the structure of the motto itself. Okay, it's exception, huh? exception here. Just the stable because the, the list is so so many parameters there. I just want to just just give you this is the motor mass, okay? But it's actually it consists of this motor mass in Ariane. It consists of basically the fuel. I took fuel plus the structure of the motor itself. Okay, done. Then you have this afterburn, huh? total mass here. Then you have afterburn. So when you have the afterburn, if you look at it, afterburn is practically is about 62,000, 62,000, eh? 62, total mass is about 200 over 1,000. So which, which means that if you look at the structure, this if you look at this structure, it's about 13,000. 13, and if you look at after burn means what? There is no more fuel, right? So if you look at it, this structure is a, this structure belongs to that motor. And after burn, that means what? You have only the structure left. But in this case, it has 62,000. This structure not only for the motor but inclusive of that shell and inclusive of that uh, basically uh, spectra, yeah, uh, that is included. All the other structures from uh, in the uh, launcher itself. That's what it says here. Okay, and you can see basically that sigma, the CE. You see CE, yeah, stage one, stage two, stage three, and the fourth stage is actually it's different because you have a different rocket engines, so you will have a different uh, CE. Likewise, mu is also different. Okay, mu one. I didn't don't have to calculate. Mu one is always one. Then there are other mu's. You see, mu's are quite quite low. Huh? Mu one always one, but then you will never be one huh? in that sense. Delta V. Uh, this is about the first uh, first stage is quite heavy. Okay, you have about uh, two, almost about three kilometers per second. Yeah. This final stage slower. That is the amount. So please do understand that huh? the start mass is important here, but then you should. Uh, you have the fairings, all those actually masses are included here. Go on. All right. Uh, these are typical catalog that you will have. When you when you want to launch a satellite, uh, the launcher provider will give you catalogs. This is actually the, uh, a simple uh, Ariane 1. Yeah, has been serviced uh, uh, long ago, a very successful rocket. Uh, very simple, but, but yet very, very successful rocket. Yeah? Uh, just look at the parameters for you. Go on. Okay, so if you look at the series stage, uh, uh, 
This is stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four. And if you look at this is a delta V. If you look at the mu one, mu L, sorry, maximum it is definitely is below one. Okay. For each and every stage, if you look at for each and every stage, you can practically interpolate what would be the exact delta V that you can expect for that stage. So which means that this, okay, in stage one, delta V would be somehow rather six, okay, six kilometer per second. Then uh, stage two, 10 kilometer per second. Finish stage two, then you have that stage three, almost 15 over kilometer per second. Final stage about 18 kilometer per second. Now, remember why stage one is, uh, is, is slower, so to say, because it's carrying all the other stages. So that explains uh, uh, that when you go higher and higher, it look, looks like your delta V actually keeps on increasing. Yes, this is how it is. Because why? Delta V keeps on increasing because that's the total delta V is needed from to, uh, to go from point 0.1 to point 0.2. You understand? From one, point 0.1 to point 0.2, this is the amount of delta V that's needed. So you point uh, uh, first stage, it has to go, it has to con constantly deliver, let's say six kilometer per second. Finish that, done. Then stage two is going to be fired, and then it's going to try, it's going to give up ten. The delta V of ten. Okay? That means from here to here, it's going to give up this delta V of ten. Then and so on and so on. Okay? So the total would be. Again, if you calculate, total will be delta V1 plus delta V2 plus delta V3. That will be a total delta V needed to travel to from point 0.1 to point 0.2 if you have staging already. Well, Alright, uh, this is a cluster of uh, uh, launchers available, typical ones. Uh, this is uh, not a new ones because why the new ones, uh, well, they haven't actually had enough of uh, catalog actually. Most of it is uh, one flight or two flights. We can't actually include them here. Most of what you see here, they have actually done quite a bit of flight, okay? And uh, if you look at the basic uh, uh, Delta V, is you can actually, you can see, yeah? Ariane's Delta V, you can see uh, uh, Saturn Delta V. Why some Delta Vs are very, very high, quick, why? Because your payload capacity is huge, two ton of satellite, you want to carry your payload. Yeah, you need the higher Delta V, that's what it means. So depending on the rocket engine, but typically this you are you are around this region if you look at it. Yeah, typically you are around this region. Alright? Go on. Okay, this is important to understand now. Now I, I've talked about a series uh, a rocket. Series rocket is extremely important, that's true. Uh, we have uh, uh, developed series rocket and we have also uh, I mean, uh, series rocket formulation, we have developed that and then we have deduced and we have deduced to a, a form where we can use comfortably, uh, which is uh, in terms of the structure ratio and payload ratio. Now, we need to optimize the payload ratio because we don't want to put too much of load in stage 1 or stage 2 or stage 3 in order for us to have a good uh, payload ratio to keep it very minimal. We have to, we have done the optimization. It's done. Now, once uh, 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 a series, series stages, we have uh, mastered it, we can now actually look into another rocket design. If you look at series stage, you put one stage after another. That means one stage, the first stage has to actually burn and finish and you eject. Then you travel with the second stage. Finish, eject. Then third stage. Finish, eject. Then the final actually payload injection or you can you can call it that you have a boost uh, boost motor kick, kick, uh, kick boost motors uh, payload will have a satellite will have will take you to the orbit so this is the stages that you have now wh why can't i do this i will on all the engines i on all the engines together why should i wait i have an engine and i am asking that first stage to carry that engine up without the engine is being on. Maybe it is not very efficient or maybe it's not very clever. Why should I do it? Now, why can't I just on them? But I can't on them because they are on top of each other. If I on them, everything is going to go busted. 
Uh, he's, he's gonna go, he's gonna burn. He's gonna burn all the stages and uh, he's gonna explode. So what I'm going to do is that, why can't actually I tweak the design, maybe put the engine side by side and I on them together. So which means that series stage, every time one engine is on, but if I have put them together side by side, I can on two engines. It's good. The good news is, the better news is that, remember the most challenging part for rocket is basically is the gravitational pull and we have seen in the equation. So why not, the idea is for me to get out of this gravitational pull as fast as possible. So I need to use all the engines as soon as possible. So why can't I just put the engines side by side and on them together? So I can get out of this gravitational pull faster compared to I wait for one engine to finish, then I on second one and so, and so forth. So then came the parallel staging solution. Parallel staging solution, you don't need to optimize in that sense because it is independent. That means what? They are not sitting one after another. They are sitting parallelly. So if you look at the above, there is no other engines above you. So why should you actually do a, a payload optimization? You don't need. So you can just use the rocket equation that what we have developed, spark and mass, and you run that. So if you have a three-stage parallel uh, rocket, you can imagine take the rocket equation out in this form. Don't talk about the structure ratio. Don't talk about the payload ratio because when you whenever whenever you are dealing with the parallel engines, you don't need structure ratio. You don't need actually the payload ratio because they are independent in their own. Just apply the rocket equation. So you can imagine you have delta v1 plus delta v2 delta v3. If you look at the formulation, it's only like this for parallel engines. Okay, what is that? Uh, uh, series and uh, if you compare both solutions, if you look at the series type, usage of uh, motor series type is just partly, you know, series. Because you know why? Because everything has to be compact. You want to put one after another. Parallel, full. You don't have to worry because there's nothing below you. You don't have to design the, the motor to fit your neighbor. No. You are free because you're atmospheric outside. So, done. Start acceleration. Series is smaller because you work with only one engine. Parallel, you can blast all this engine. Of course, it's bigger. So that you get faster. Structure load. This is actually smaller. Because why? One after another, you put itself. But payload, parallel is bigger because, remember, you are carrying two engines together, side, just like that. So the load is challenging. Bending moment, obviously bigger. Why? Because the series stage tend to be taller compared to the parallel stage. Gravitational loss, bigger. Why is bigger? Because you are very slow of getting out of planet Earth. So obviously you are going to have bigger. The parallel stage, your gravitational loss is smaller because you are trying to get up fast. Aerodynamic loss, smaller because there is only one cylinder. And parallel stage, you are side by side. You end up actually having more basically aerodynamic loss. Nozzle compatibility series, normally they design it in such that to take you into account of your neighbor. But if you look at a parallel, no, nozzles, not good at all because they, do, they, they don't spend time on, uh, on designing the nozzle compatibility because you don't have to worry anything below you. You are free. So that compatibility is not, uh, is not, is not an issue. Okay. Uh, space shuttle, for example, is a parallel stage. Why is parallel stage? This is a main, just now we have calculated eh? uh, SSME. Uh, you, this is already been decommissioned. You will have for now uh, basically the Dragon uh, flights. So, uh, but again, it is uh, one of those fantastic flights, I would say, or, or spacecraft, uh, space shuttle. But uh, the Russians have uh, their version of a space shuttle. I think some of you might know uh, Buran. They had space shuttle even before that. Buran looks exactly like this. But since it's uh, not cost effective, so uh, you know it has been abandoned. Actually, this mission has been uh, space shuttle once. Basically, there's, uh, there's tragedies, of course. 
uh, that has compelled them basically to, to, to look into some of the options. But also it's very expensive to, to fly a space shuttle. Uh, space shuttle will have about seven crews easily, okay, one commander and then you have to three. But the cost of each time basically you fly this, uh, you bring it down, of course it's reusable, it's very good because rocket is basically, all the other rockets you use once and you dispose where? Dispose in the planet Earth. You don't reuse back. So this is a reusable type. Why this space shuttle came in? Because it is a concept of reusable rockets. So, uh, but unfortunately, it's very expensive basically to refurbish and to reuse. Yes, you bring back. Uh, rock, uh, we will see in our re-entry uh, class or re-entry chapter that uh, space shuttle reusable space shuttle is indeed expensive. Uh, it costs you about two hundred and fifty million at least to do the refurbishment cost for after you you do a flight. So it is too expensive actually. Although you can carry uh, typical rockets carry about three uh, uh, I mean uh, astronauts or cosmonauts. You can carry up to seven. That costs about maybe 150 million. This costs about 250 million. But you have time and it is not new and you need to actually strip them and then start actually doing the retiling for all those uh, thermal uh, protection. So, but again, what is more important here to understand, uh, the bigger one here, it is not an uh, engine. This is actually solid, solid boosters. That means the solid engines, powder. This is a space shuttle main engine. You have seen just now that calculation on SSME a bit, on the exact CE, and the specific impulse about four, 455 seconds. It's reasonably good. This is an external fuel tank. And when, uh, when it's fly, vertical fly, Vertical flight, two boosters will be on, space shuttle main engine will be on. So you look at that, all three, in fact, three engines are on together and up you go. It's fast. Yeah? Got, uh, I've given a bit on the uh, space shuttle, uh, uh, what is that, uh, parameters. Please have a look at it. Now, more importantly, look at, uh, we will learn about a few later. Uh, uh, typical fuel for, uh, for orbit system, basically, nitrogen dioxide is for your... Uh, oxidator, you have a hydrazine, typically hydrazine, but more interesting if you look at it, SSME, just now I've also mentioned it's a liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, uh, hydrogen being the fuel and oxygen being the oxidator. This is the main engine, the main engine performance. So uh, it's, it's not too bad of an engine, uh, it's good uh, if you ask me. Uh, specific in past 4.5, we have actually been, uh, we have been exposed to that before. I have a look at it as a, as an uh, homework please. Go on. Ariane 4, another type. Uh, now this is uh, stage 1. Stage 1 is liquid. Stage 2 is actually is a, a booster. Solid, solid. Okay. Uh, stick. Then there is this. This is a bit uh, slightly different than a uh, uh, space shuttle main engine. Boosters, this, uh, this Ariane 4, it has 4 boosters. 2 is basically is a, a solid and 2 is actually liquid. It's a liquid boosters. But don't forget, when, uh, when they fire, all those actually is going to work together. That means what? The main engine is going to work, two boosters of solid is working, two boosters of liquid is also working. All firing together and then this spiral stage huh? and go up faster. Alright? And uh, of course, uh, stage two, stage two and stage three is basically is liquid, yeah? liquid stage. Alright? Uh, RN5, uh, a good uh, working horse. For Ariane series, it's a very successful launcher. Uh, we will maybe we will have a look at uh, one one of the uh, very rare uh, uh, test flight that uh, I will also share uh, in the class on the launch basically. So if you look at uh, Ariane's, uh, if you have central stage, central stage is a this is a central stage. Central stage is a, a supercritical stage, uh, liquid uh, liquid hydrogen, just like the SSME space shuttle main engine. Liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. Then you have a two boosters, solid boosters. Upper stage, upper stage is basically is a, a fuel, rocket fuel, rocket fuel, hydrogen and uh, nitrogen dioxide. So if you have, uh, technically speaking, you have uh, three good stages like this here. Yeah? This is a typical uh, uh, RN RN five, All right? Um, I think uh, that's about it. Thanks.